This is the fun part. So over the last couple of weeks, people kept saying, have you heard about Coach Yo? Yo, have you met with Coach Yo? And you know, some of those answers were not yet, not quite. Yes, we have heard about her. And the comeback was, when you do, you will be blown away. Well, I just believe that transition and change is, is hard for anybody. Nobody's comfortable doing it. Um, and it takes a level of um, camaraderie and teamwork. It takes a level of trust. It takes a level of toughness, uh, both mentally and physically. And um, I believe that both, both are necessary for growth. It makes you uncomfortable, but when you get out your comfort zone, change kind of gives you that um, that extra release to just be who you are and embrace what the change is. <laughs> this, this is it right here. My new nickname, call me Deuce. We got one more, we finna get this thing started, baby. Huh? Loosen up, loosen up, baby. Everyone really wants to be better than they were yesterday. Everyone wants to improve 1%. But uh, I think that a lot of people don't understand that uh, the will to win is the will to work. Good, perfect, that's it. Tighter, tight, that's it. That's what I want, a tight move. Relax, you're gonna be able to go to work. I'm not stopping you from cooking, but the meal was inside. Communication is growing a lot and it's still growing. Like, we still have our dead moments, but she's still, she's still on us almost every day and all the other coaches as well of us communicating with each other because we haven't been playing with each other long enough to know, oh, she gonna be in the corner or, you know, like to just know where we gonna be. Everybody can't see if it's going on, so we have to talk to each other, so communication is key. That's something we were preached to about, even in preseason, even in individual workouts. From the first official practice up until now, the communication has gotten a lot better. Like, I feel like when we first started out, you know, we took the summertime as an advantage to, you know, get together and get to know each other. And we took that as an opportunity to, you know, grow together. I'm trying to find Miss Coleman's class so we can read to these sweet children, if I can ever get there. Don't run. Hello. Okay, y'all ready for the story? Yeah. Okay, this book is called Pete the Cat, the first Thanksgiving. Community service is very important for me because I feel like when I was young, and necessarily when I say dealing with children, you know, that type of community service when I was young. The pilgrims arrived in the New World at the Plymouth Rock in what is now Massachusetts. I also, when I was young, I used to look at people, I wish I had that person to just necessarily just sit there and talk to me about what it takes to be at this level. That was Thanksgiving. That was the first Thanksgiving. Now, are y'all ready for Thanksgiving? It's, it's good for me and it makes me feel good because I want the children to know that this, is, this can be an outlet. You know, if you're feeling frustrated or anything as a child, you having any kind of barriers, anything that you're going through, this can be an outlet in a, some sort of positive light, you know what I mean? And it makes me feel good whenever I'm able to share that positive light amongst the younger children. Hello everybody, welcome to opening night of the College of Basketball season. And with it, we've got a great first matchup of the year. The Norfolk State Spartans are taking on the Ole Miss Rebels here in Oxford. And no one is more excited to get back out on the floor than Chandra Cassesso. Sandra Cassesso, she is going to be a comeback story. As a new era of women's hoops begins to take its first steps in a new direction, for two Rebels, these strides take on even more meaning as their seasons were cut short due to injuries basketball players know too well. Ah! And Chandra Cassesso came up very frustrated. Training staff is coming down. Meredith Pendergast will take a look at the senior. Once I was injured, when I um, found out that I um, tore my ACL, I was on rehab 
all the way up until before I had surgery. So it really started before I had surgery. But after surgery, it hit me to that I really gotta focus on it. Once I was able to bend my knee past 90 degrees. All right, you remember what you're doing? You wanna do a few jumps, just regular to warm up? Straighten your leg out, two, there you go. Three, four, good, five. All right, four, one, one, three, stop. It was tough for me, like, it was really tough. Like, I was emotional sometimes, but I ain't let it show. This is my break. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, five? We're doing three more. You're trying to go too far out. You're trying to, I don't know if you're trying to get in front of the mirror, don't think about that. But you're pushing off, and then this is going way further than it needs to go. This leg's going way further than it needs to go. The reaction balls. And plan on doing it on the court. Before I would injure myself, I've always respected Merida. I love the person that every time you walk in, she, you know, she's smiling and stuff. So then when rehab started, that's when I really got to know Merida. Good job. <laughs> Eight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nine. Ten. Good. All right. Take a second, and then we'll do ten catches to the front. I'm tired. I need a break. I need some getaways. Something. Along the road to recovery, the senior guard would not travel alone. It's okay, Mary. It's just the first day. Easy. <laughs> After an Achilles tear in the early stages of her freshman workouts, the Bronx baller is back on the hardwood, ready to show out. <laughs> it's been a year. What I tell you, you're going to go through it. Are you excited? Yeah, every time I do something good, I'm going to look at you like this. Yes! Go Meredith. <laughs> um, Meredith was somebody who I didn't immediately grasp to because, I mean, she's your trainer. You kind of think of her like, oh, she tapes you, she makes you get in the cold tub. But once I got hurt, she was that immediate person that reassured me that everything was going to be OK. All right, ready? Yes. The goat comes through again. Awesome taping. At first, uh, me and Dreek, it's not that we wasn't close. We were just teammates. And she was a senior, I was a freshman. Then when Shandrika got hurt, I was like, we're like rehab sisters now. <laughs> Well, me and Mimi, we always had rehab together most times, and we always lift the weights together most times. So it was like, there for each other, just push each other. It's like, you're not in this alone. But as Shandrika started, to get, she had surgery, and then she started getting rehab, I was always there, she was always there. We had long rehab hours. And with it being like a big uh, class difference and age difference, it kind of didn't seem like that because we were so close that we became sisters, and that was just on the court, off the court and I really think I kind of look up to her as a big sister at this point. First home game, uh, in the starting line, that's what called. As I was walking off, I heard Mimi say, Drake, and she looked like she was about to cry a little bit. So, you know, I just went in, had to give her a big old hug. The hug was kind of like, we're back. And as Mimi Reed drives to the glass, gets the shot from the ball, first bucket, Coach Yo on the sideline. That's how you play! That's how you play! One ball since the 70s. Mimi Reed now off and running again. No look back. Jalea Dunlap. What a nice little dish there by Mimi Reed. It's on the floor. Six minutes to play in the third quarter. Sesum spots up for three and nails it. Sandrika Sesum connects on her first shot of the night. But for me to play in my first official game, back on the same court that I injured myself. It was tough, but like, I had to get over that fear. It's wide open, and Coach Yo, a little bit of a stop. She saw it too. This time, Sessa not as open and doesn't need the space as she knocks down the three, her first points of her season, senior season. There it is. I have been waiting on that shot to fall. Sandra can Sessa a little bit slow start, but hopefully that's going to just ignite the fire for her. Like, people didn't see the behind the scenes and behind the scenes with the rehab and stuff. So we knew once we was going to get back, we was going to go. So the hug is just like reminding us kind of like what we've been through to now we're here in this moment. And that's every game and every time we step on the floor together. Will pull it down. 
down. Coach Yo, 1 and 0. Oh, Ole Miss takes down Norfolk State. Uh oh, that was the first win of the year. Hey, it's a long ride. Y'all give it up for Coach Yo. Hey, Coach. Hey, hey. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, glad to be here. Let's jump into it. First okay. of all, we're going to have a basketball show December 4th, so we could spend a lot more time with Coach Yo on that particular show. But we wanted to kind of get a taste for it. The first thing we're going to do is promote the fact that we're playing and folks need to come. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, we play tomorrow. Right. And just in case you had an excuse, I brought tickets. Ah. All right. There for you the go. reason why you couldn't attend, we play tomorrow at 6 p.m. Versus Temple, and then we play sat Sunday at 2. One and one. Now, you heard mm -hmm. the situation where there's only a handful of returning players. So you right. had to get out, scramble, find some yep. players, and I now know you're in the heat of <coughs> recruiting and building this thing uh, back up. But uh, how do you feel it's going so far? It's going great. Listen, uh, signing day is tomorrow. We have four young ladies that we're going to announce that I think uh, everybody that will be excited about. Good. Uh, um, and two of them are top. 100 in the country and uh you know as far as the team's concerned you know that was our second time playing ever <laughs> you know my team this is the they've never played together so yeah. we're all learning and we're all trying to figure it out but if you watch us they play hard they're gonna they're gonna compete and uh I, and we're gonna get better every game put your own personal stamp on your style of coaching my style of coaching uh, is intense, yeah. <laughs> um, charismatic to the officials <laughs> because I'm trying to win them over right now. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I show, I show it all. I'm very into it. I celebrate with, our, with my uh, ladies when they do well. I'm on them when, when they don't, when they underachieve. Uh, but, at, but at the end of the day, they understand that I'm here not because I'm focused on wins and losses, more more so us improving every time we step out on the floor. We're excited about the future. So where will you be tomorrow night? At the pavilion watching women's Let basketball. Let me know. Raise your hand if, if you, you need, need a ticket. Tickets, come I up and meet Coach Yo. You. She's got tickets. Hey, thanks so much. Thanks so much. I'm Good official we'll now night. I'm on the You're show. official. You're part of Rep Talk Nation. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Though the snow would be falling outside, the Rebels would get off to a red hot start in the first quarter. Mayo Campbell left Crystal Allen wide open on the wing and she'll knock it down. Kara Salter also checks into the game. She'll take a jab step and let the shot fly. That's a great shot! That's a great shot! Hand in her face, Allen's gonna pull on the three. Bang! Allen's gonna jab to her right, throw up another shot. She's got seven. Coach Cardozo wants a timeout. Talk about who's covering Crystal Allen. 12-2, Ole Miss leading here in the first quarter. Well, I was kind of surprised that we were able to gain such an advantage. Uh, with Ron Temple in the first quarter. Ladies, they can't stop us, and we stopping them, all right? And they small and undersized. Let's use our size. Here comes Gabby Crawford making her collegiate debut. Remember, she got her transfer waiver approved today by the NCAA. We didn't have to react to the news other than just be excited. We had been preparing for the moment uh, as if she was going to be clear. And then next thing you know, all I heard was, Gabby's clear, Gabby's clear. I thought it was a joke, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe somebody standing around with a camera like, yep, oh, just kidding, you know. But we found out Gabby was cleared, and I instantly got happy because I'm just like, ah, you know what I mean? We've been waiting for this moment forever. She worked hard every day in practice. Um, she worked hard in preseason when she was cleared to, to do individual workouts, stuff like that. She's just a hard worker. Gabby brings a high level of uh, passion and energy and toughness. Next to Crystal, she's our hardest worker. Crawford would put on her hard hat to the tune of six points and three rebounds in only 15 minutes of play. I was prepared for our team to hit and then be hit. Crawford 
Drives baseline, attacks, puts it up and in. She's got six points. And so Temple went on a run. Mackins finds Shannon Atkinson wide open underneath the basket. Left corner to Mackins, curling off of the screen, shot fakes, drives, goes up and banks it in. Wow. Come on, D! Let's go, Wade! Mate gambles, Davis takes it to the rim, lays it up in traffic. I knew, I turned to my coaches and I said, look, we got to win this for our girls because right now they just don't know. They, they got their run, but our mindset was get a stop, execute, get a stop, execute. And at the time, Crystal was hot. Smooth shot by Crystal Allen. She puts a shoulder into a defender, creates a little bit of space and fades away, knocking it down. That, that is a tough shot. We know that Crystal, she's a hot shooter. She's hard to guard, so if the ball's in her hands, something's going to happen. Allen, step back, puts the defender on the floor. I like to see her see that with the clock ticking down, it's ice water in her veins. Hey, let's get a stop. Hey, wait, wait. Finish what it's stopped. For us to um, finish our games, we have to just continue to buy in and be coachable throughout the whole game and to not give in and to just fight, fight, fight. And to just do the, the little things and communicate with one another. Ole Miss is going to dribble this clock out. Final five seconds. Hey, everybody. I want to thank you personally for coming out. And I want to thank you all so much for coming out and supporting these girls. Please come out on Sunday and support us. Hotty toddy. As the buzzer sounds on this contest, the work is only beginning in the McEwen household. You found it. Which one? The red one or blue one? Where? I needed this. My family has just been incredible, and I would say if you're gonna be in this profession and excel, you have to have a phenomenal support group whatever that looks like. You know, for me, it's my husband and my parents. When you're a parent, you don't get opportunities to sleep in and stuff. Not when you have a six and one year old, so you have to get up super early before them. If this was during the week, we would already have them up rolling because they have to get ready for school. After I get, meditate, pray, my day is, my day starts immediately, right from there. Hey, hey, Yuri. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I mean, it's, it's tough. It's at the same time, it's rewarding. I think my, my daughters are light years ahead because they're, around so many different people. I love the fact that they know that uh, the world is just not them. You know, they're around, they're on the university campus. They get to see all races, all, all, all kinds, all types of people. Um, and, that, and that's what the world is. It, it gives them a perspective. I'm gonna do like French toast sticks and then I'll have that. Hey girl. Hey. What's up? We didn't really have a specific strategy of what we was actually going to do. Um, as far as me getting the kids and doing the, that, that type of stuff, the only thing we knew is that this first year was going to be super, super hectic to make sure that she gets a chance to still be a mom, because she's going to be a coach, and that's, that's the bottom line. She's going to be a coach, because that's what she really, really loves. But she loves these girls so much, and I know that she misses them, especially when she goes on the road. So. Um, I try to let them try her, uh, our best to make sure that she has time to be a mom. Thank you, strawberries. I love these comments. Thanks, toast. I feel like having a family atmosphere here is very important because, I mean, there's some times where um, freshmen coming straight out of high school can go to a college, commit to a college, and they might not feel like they're at home. They might feel like they're just a part of a system. Oh, she got me! Oh. Oh. <laughs> 
you know, and I feel like that's very important for, you know, us as basketball players, as women's basketball players, to, to grasp a family, you know, environment whenever they choose and what college they want to go to because if you go to a college where you don't necessarily feel comfortable, if you go to a college where you, you don't feel wanted. Here's what I love about being able to bring people in to my circle and my life is that they don't get to see it. You know, I think one thing about me, people feel like they can touch me, like um, I'm transparent. Yeah, we gotta get a picture of it, come on now. My social media is going yeah, nuts. Get the season, baby, stay tuned. The McEwen household, howdy toddy, no sales. <laughs> social media is just so powerful, you know, it's, it's powerful when it's used in a positive light and it's powerful when it's used in a negative light. Uh, I choose to use it in the positive light. Oh yeah! Oh, we lit. You got mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it, that's the one. That. I choose to use it because it gives me a platform to encourage other people um, that uh, probably have goals and dreams like I did. So it's not necessarily for coaches. It's for anybody that you know has a dollar and a dream. As we take a look at the Ole Miss Rebels wearing the powder blues for the very first time. In fact, the first time either the men or women have worn the powder blues. The men will wear them later this season. So a nice look for Ole Miss. While all of the eyes were on the new threads filling Craddock Court, you could not ignore the feeling that business was about to pick up at the pavilion. You see me? No, you're gonna ignore me. Oh, he's recording me. I'm shy. Big nasty. Y'all switch sides. Ooh, y'all on fire. together, be confident, bring it in. Talk about what we want to do, all right? 100%, 100% of the time. Ole Miss looking to make it three out of four to start the season, and we are underway from the pavilion. I know that Coach Yo is wanting to keep that momentum that they got early on in the game. It's exactly how she wants to start this game out, keep the energy going. Ole Miss gets the steal. The runner, and it drops for Crystal Allen. So Allen on the scoreboard with her first points. Going crazy again. I want to be like Crystal when I grow up. CC Muhate, nice take. She commanded the ball. They got her the ball with a great entry pass. And she now has four. Greg, she is a different player than she was last season. She's just got another level of confidence about her. I love seeing Cece Mahate really come into her own as a player. Yes, and one! And one! Let's go! Seven second differential between the shot and the game clock. And a three for Sessa. With a hand in her face, too. That was beautiful. Western Michigan, one of 12 from three point distance. You mentioned it earlier, live and die by the three. How about that? Crystal Allen with her second triple. Ole Miss, on the other hand, is hit four of nine, and the lead is ballooned to 14. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh my God. Right down Broadway. Taylor Smith with her first bucket. What a great finish by Taylor Smith. Oh, that was a tough shot. Okay! The Adla Kitchens has now checked in for Ole Miss, the 6 2 freshman. That was a great screen for Taylor Smith. Another E line drive to the hole. Three, two, one! As we hit halftime at the pavilion, strong first half for Ole Miss. 
Despite the lead going into the second half, the Rebels would need to continue to treat every bounce of the ball as an opportunity to learn about one another. Muhate comes right back with a bucket. Her first in a while, she has a half dozen. Ole Miss needed that one. 10 for Salter. Oh, a big three for Mimi Reed. That's her first made three of the season. It was like jumping rope at that point. Like You just kept going and kept going. And we got to stop, we executed. And then it was at a point where it kind of looked like we were just in the flow of things. Like It looked like we've been playing together for a couple of years now. Just over here smiling because that is such a beautiful shot. Coach Shane Clipfell of Western Michigan calls for the timeout. The Ole Miss jumps again out to a four point lead. Just two seconds, they're gonna have to launch. Bull got it off and made it. She beat the clock, don't look at it, but it looks like she beat the clock. Yeah, that looked like it was a clean shot to me too, and that was huge. But I think the main thing about that quarter was that we kept our composure. We didn't get down, we didn't, we didn't pout, we didn't quit. And it was just like we came together. The seniors, we, we came together as seniors. You know, we looked like seniors on the court. Oh, it's a double double for LaCara Salter with 11 points and 10 rebounds. What a factor she has been this afternoon for Ole Miss. It's such an asset to this team. Ole Miss on a 10 0 run over the last nearly three minutes. She can Ole Miss to the free throw line. Two big free throws. How about that for Dunlap? That is big. We've kind of gone back and forth until the last couple of minutes here where Western Michigan fell behind by two possessions. So now they're down five. Here's a three and another three by Meredith Miller. She has eight in the quarter. Oh my gosh. Now they have the foul, and they do. I, I can tell you this. You know, our young women are really striving and trying hard to um, have success this year. And they, they have their own ideas of what it looks like. Uh, but it's not due to lack of commitment. Make these. Down at the half, big third quarter, grab the lead. We've gone back and forth, and it's a three-point game. Clutch free throws again for Ole Miss, this time by Crystal Allen. Now Western Michigan has to get it in bounds. Under 10 to go. They need to shoot, three seconds to go. A launch off the mark by Meredith Miller. And Ole Miss is going to come away with the win 69-66. It's just a process. And, it's, and I continue to preach that every single day with them that, you know, it may be a process of winning sometimes, but sometimes it may be a process of losing. And if it gets us where we want to go, then, then it's never a loss. It's always uh, you either win or you learn. This is the Crystal Allen fan club right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Thanks, baby. Thanks. You too? Yes. It feels great. We got to keep getting wins. We got to move on to the next game now. That's a good win. We got to move on to the next game now. Excited? Good. Just, it's more to come. So just wait. <laughs> you be good, girl. <laughs> do it. Do it. Uh.